the word of the Lord, Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. I tell you, we were blessed not to get as much snow as some folks got. Proverbs chapter 11. I'm sorry, Proverbs 13. I was reading Proverbs 11. Proverbs 13 and verse 12, one you've heard very, very often. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, but when, somebody say when. When, when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Anybody ever been heart sick? Yeah. But when the desire comes, when the desire comes, let's pray. Father, we love you today. I thank you for the power of your word. Lord, I thank you that through your word you give life. And Lord, I pray let that life come upon us. Lord, in these areas where the enemy is trying to drain life out of us, let new life come. Let hope spring up in our heart. Lord, let hope come into our very being in our mind and our spirit God let it begin to open our understanding to things Lord that you have for us that Lord we may be deferred today we may be delayed but the desire is going to come and I thank you for that in the name of Jesus we pray bless us today God bless you you may be seated in the presence of the Lord life is filled with many disappointments for anyone who's ever had expectations they also have known disappointment and here's the sad reality. Dreams don't always come true. People don't always keep their word. Things get broke. Nothing irritates me more than when I order something and it's broke in the box. Things get broke. Temporal things, natural things that abide in this earth. Every bit of it is subject to failure. And failure is never an easy thing to deal with. Failure is one of those things that brings tremendous disappointment. Failure, the thing about failure is it creates an atmosphere to where it's easy to quit. Failure does even more than that. It fabricates excuses and excuses are how we try to escape from facing reality. I don't believe that as a child of God that we were meant to quit. I don't believe that we were meant to throw our hands up in defeat. I don't believe that we were meant to just look and say, oh, well, and we move on and we never really see the end of something. I believe as the children of God that even though sometimes we fail, it is never an excuse to quit. Because the reality is not everyone who fails quits. For some people, failure was an eye opener to the truth. And that truth is simply this, that we would not, without God or without God, none of us could or would make it. When I look at the great victories of my life, they were in some of the most weakest moments of my life. Some of the most powerful moments that I've ever had with God is when I did not have the strength or the ability to fight back. The thing of it is, seeing your life from ground level helps us to realize that a greater power has his hand on our life. See, disappointment cannot destroy your destiny if your hope is in Jesus Christ. When you're down, you've got to keep looking up to a God that has promised he is never going to leave you and he's never going to fail you. If our will is in line with God's will, then we will never feel like a failure. 
If our heart is in tune with God, the word fail is never going to cross our mind. The only word that's going to cross our mind is the word faithful. Because if Jesus said it, I believe it. If Jesus told me I can do it, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do it. Does anybody feel the same way? If Jesus told you it's going to happen, how many of you know he is faithful to do what he promised? See, there is something that we have that only God can give, and that is hope. The word hope, if you look at it from a spiritual standpoint or a scriptural standpoint, means patient expectation. What that tells me is the hope that comes from God is staying power. The hope that comes from God is resting power. The hope that comes from God is the power to tarry. It's not about trying to hype you up. It's about trying to hope you up. There's some of us here today, we get caught up in things. We get in this hype of things, especially at New Year. Everybody's on a diet. Everybody's got resolutions. But what we need to do is to hope up. Put our hope in God and say, God, I know that you're not going to fail me. This message that I'm preaching today about your desire coming, this is not about hype because it's a new year. This is a message of hope because we serve a God who never changes. Amen. Here's something interesting. When you look at the word hope, and you can look at it in the Hebrew, you can look at it in the Greek, but one of the images that the word hope portrays is a bird that has suffered wing damage who's waiting until they recover. I want you to know there's some of us that have suffered some wing damage but the devil didn't have the power to destroy you. There's some of us that he has broken our wings. He's tried to drain us of our hope. He's disappointed us and tried to bring us into discouragement. But I'm telling you, we have a God today, hallelujah, that would not allow the enemy to destroy us. You are going to recover because they that wait upon the Lord will never be disappointed, but they will be delivered. Hallelujah. Is anybody waiting upon the Lord? Hallelujah. My patient expectation is in the power and the promise of God. Amen. That's why the writer said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. In other words, God's going to bend that damaged wing. And God's going to put that damaged wing back together. And you're going to mount up again. You're going to go up and over the battle that you've been in. And you're going to be renewed with strength from God. So instead of disappointment, I seek deliverance. Anybody ready? to see God deliver you from the things that have tried to destroy and discourage you. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The healing is taking you to new heights. I'm telling you, I believe it in the Holy Ghost when I was writing this message. I can see some of you spreading out your wings. I can see where the damage has been. I can see where the enemy tried to break it, but I can see you flapping those wings and taking flight because renewed strength from God is going to take you higher. And renewed strength in God is going to renew your vision. Renewed strength in God is going to renew your determination. You're going to mount up with joy. Hallelujah. Because the God of hope is your help in times of trouble. And he said that when the desire comes, somebody say, when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Do you believe that? <laughs> That's why we hope. Patient expectation. Hoping in God is an exercise of faith. In 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13, Paul groups three things together. He says, faith, hope, and love. He said, and now abideth faith, hope, and charity, or faith, hope, and love. In this present life that we live, these three things direct our vision. Faith, hope, and love. Faith causes us to believe in God. Hope causes us to expect from God. And love is how we express faith and hope. God loves us. Why would he fail us? God loves us. So faith pleases God. Hope endures. And love fulfills the law. All of these things. Because Paul talks about it. He says, where there's tongues, they will cease. Where there's prophecy, they will cease. There, there won't be any faith and hope in heaven because you won't need it. Even faith and hope are going to fade away. But love 
will remain. There was a man, my wife was telling me a story about a man that went to heaven. This, and, and this, is, this is real. This is a real experience happened to him. He went to heaven. And the Lord asked him a question. He said, do you want to stay or do you want to go back? And for whatever reason it was, maybe I think maybe it was a mother or a wife or somebody that he loved that he said to the Lord, he said, well, I want to go back. And he made a statement. He said, I wished I'd have never said I want to go back. He said, ever since I have been back, he said, I have been depressed. He said, I can't find joy. Let me tell you something. If, if, if I ever go to heaven and I'm given the option, I ain't coming back. Y'all do whatever you want to do. Just don't pray. Oh, God, let him live. Let him live. Let him come back. Don't pray that prayer for me because I don't want to come back. Well, then later, yeah, sure, but I'll come back in the, <laughs> on a white horse. My brother says, when I get there, I'm not coming back, horse or no horse. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the chance to leave this earth. Can you imagine what you can feel in heaven? Can you imagine that in heaven you're not going to have to try to have faith for anything? You're not going to have to hope in anything. It's just nothing but pure love. Faith is going to fail. Hope is going to fail. But love is going to always last. But these things that we, that we have, this faith, hope, and love, they are tested from time to time. The Bible said hope deferred makes the heart sick. Listen to what it means. It means a hope that is seized in order to delay makes the heart sick. You know the devil wants to make you sick? The devil does loves to take and delay your hope. He loves to delay our prayers. The word delay means to hinder, to linger, and disappointment. How many times have we got down to pray about something and before we ever prayed, we were defeated before we got there? I mean, there's some of us today that we've been praying about stuff for years and we've been looking and saying, God, when is the desire coming? When is the desire coming? And I'll even go as far to say this, or sometimes when we get to the place to where we start not believing anymore in what God promised us that we think is done and it's over and it's gone. Let me ask you a question. What is the enemy so afraid of? Your desire. There is nothing in this world that can stop God from answering our prayers. So the enemy tries to discourage us from praying. Seizing your expectation discourages you from fighting. Because prayer is more than just a conversation. Prayer is a battle weapon. So what is the enemy so afraid of? Your desire. Desire is the longing and the delight of your heart. There's some of us today that are here. Some of us that are watching on YouTube right now have been saying, God, but there is this desire with me. There's people who have desired to be in ministry, but nobody gives them a chance. There are people who have desired for this to happen and that to happen, but nobody seems to want to cooperate. There are people today saying, God, but what about my desire? What about my desire? And the enemy the whole time is trying to put the brakes on their prayer line to discourage them. Let me tell you, prayer is not a, a quick loop job. You don't just go in there and say, I want the old change and it happens that quickly it is a battle weapon you gotta fight and you gotta push and you gotta get up when you get knocked down and you gotta keep believing and hoping patiently in expectation this is what the scripture says Psalms 37 4 delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart what is God saying he said you gotta find your happiness in me he said you gotta understand that I am the source of the desires of your heart you don't have that desire just because you woke up one day and had a whim or thought you'd do something there's things that are bubbling and churning in your spirit that God has put there it is not imagination it is the power of the spirit you got to throw your expectation on him. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. And let not your heart be troubled. God longs to fulfill the desires of our heart. But a weak heart doesn't feel too courageous. A weak heart. A sick heart. You know, the Bible says... 
that hope deferred makes the heart sick. This, this is where determination and discouragement meet toe to toe. Can you imagine if God answered all our prayers as soon as we prayed them? But he doesn't. He tests us. And when you are dealing with a delay. Like last night, my wife and I have got hooked on the Waltons. Every night, it's two episodes of the Waltons. We bought our first season. Last night, we finished up our first season. Well, according to Amazon, season two was supposed to be there yesterday. It wasn't. So tonight, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess it's back to Little House on the Prairie. Finishing up. We left Mary blind. That's where Mary's at. So Mary's still wandering around. So we gotta, we gotta find her. But you know, and and, I, and you talk about a delay. That's not a delay. I mean, of course, it's you know we warned it yesterday because we were going to go into season two. But you know, we were talking about real stuff in life that some things we've been praying about for years. Things that look like were just about to happen and they didn't happen. We still believe in them. We still know that God didn't make a mistake that that's for us. But yet for some reason the enemy's spotting tooth and nail to stop everything from happening. And the thing of it is he can't stop God from doing it. But he can stop us from expecting it. And you got to fight. This is where determination. Is anybody determined? I mean, do we still have some determination left in the church? Or has everybody in the church just kind of fell over and flopped over and said, oh, well, I can't do that. No, is there still some fighters left in God's church? Are there still some redeemed in God's church that will look and say, my feet are on the rock and I shall not be moved? Is there anybody that's got some faith in you that said, hey, I know I'm in a delay, but the desire's coming. Hallelujah. I don't know when it is, but it is. Hallelujah, the only thing that can help you break loose is set your affection on where your desire is coming from. My hope is in the Lord. My desire is going to come. The enemy can delay you, but he can't stop the desire from coming. I hear some chains breaking off of hope. Oh, I feel some chains are breaking off of hope. There's a delay coming to an end. Somebody's been delayed here, but I'm telling you, your desire is around the corner because being deferred doesn't change God's ability to answer. Being deferred doesn't change God's mind. Your desire is coming. These chains of discouragement and disappointment are no match for the God of hope. He is a God of hope and my hope is in the Lord. Has anybody still got your eyes fixed on Jesus? Because when the desire comes, when the chains are broken, when the delay is over, when the enemy runs out of options, I hear the Lord say enough is enough. Enough, you've held it up long enough. You've stopped it long enough. Their desire is coming. Somebody say it's coming. When the desire cometh. When. 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 Has that word ever felt like an eternity? How many times has God been asked when? I wonder if Joseph felt that way. You know, dreams are life-changing. I encourage you to dream. Mm -hmm. Dreams are life-changing. Dreams can birth hope in somebody. Dreams can also burden you. You know, why, why are dreams from God thought so hard? Because they're impossible for you and I to fulfill on our own. A dream from God can only take God to fulfill it. Amen. And you know, when it comes to our dreams, sometimes we are the cause of our own delay. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 3 through 13, you know, when uh, the uh, Philistines took the ark and God struck them with tumors and all other kind of stuff, 
Well, they sent the ark back and it was pulled on oxen and wherever it stopped, they took it in the house and that house was blessed and this went on and on and on. And finally, David said, hey, he said, I've got a tent set up. I want the ark of God here. I want the presence of God with me. And so the Bible said they went down to get it. And to, due to a lack of diligence, they were delayed. David went to get the ark and instead of the priest carrying it like they were supposed to, the Bible said he put it on a cart and the oxen began to stumble. And when they did, Uzziah reached out to stay the ark and God struck him dead. So here a delay caused death, displeasure, fear, and disappointment. Because the Bible said David was displeased and then he was afraid. You don't get mad at God. And now he was disappointed. He said, how do I get the ark of God here? David's own lack of diligence, his lack of studying how to get it there, caused a delay in his life. Delays can be costly. So David's lack of diligence puts a hold on his desire. And you know, my father and I, my father and I, and I were talking, and we're talking about changing and this and that. He said, you know, he said. He said, there's nobody else that will give you any more trouble in your life than your own self. I said, oh, I know that. Yes, sir. Amen. And it's true. Because there are times we have dreams and we want those dreams so bad. We want them to work out. We want them to happen. And so we feel like sometimes, well, let me just let me just do something and maybe that will help it. And in the end process, we end up taking two steps back instead of two steps forward. But then David got it right. He did it God's way. David went and got priests and he said, listen, I want you to put them golden stabs in there. I want you to bear that ark on your shoulder. See, let me tell you, when you have a real dream from God and you have a real desire from God, you're going to feel the weight and you're going to feel the burden of it. But if you will dare carry the burden to God, you're going to feel the glory of it as well. Because David didn't go away from this time displeased and angry. He didn't walk away from there bearing somebody. But the Bible said this time he went out dancing before the Lord with all of his might because his desire was on its way. And friends, sometimes we got to look and say, you know what? I'm tired of sitting in the muddy ground. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise God because my desire is on the way. I can praise Him even with this burden on my shoulder because I know the answer is coming and the desire is coming. So we wait with patient expectation despite the test and the trial. The thing about Joseph is his dreams were not just dreams. They were words and promises made by God. Amen. You know, the writer of Psalms 105 says that until the time that his word came, talking about Joseph, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Now, there's two things here. First of all, the Bible said he was sold as a servant, and that means a slave for the length of his life. So when Joseph was sold into slavery, he was going to be a slave. If God had not intervened, he would have been a slave for the rest of his life. But Joseph went even lower than that. He became a prisoner. And to put it metaphorically, to put someone that I was said his feet were fast in stalks and he laid in irons. That Hebrew metaphor means that Joseph was pierced to the heart. Heartbreak. His heart, not literally, but spiritually, burst. We think that Joseph was in prison for 10 years. 10 years. 10 years of his life, he faced a season of unfulfilled hope. Ten years of unfulfilled hope. That same word that spoke to Joseph in his dreams of greatness and power was now stinging him to the point of bursting his heart. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Have you ever felt heart sick? And you know, if it was just 
a dream, just any old dream, we can say to Joseph, hey, why should you expect any more? Things happen, right? Stuff happens to people. But we're dealing with more than just Joseph having a dream, a childish dream about being bigger and greater than all of his brothers. No, we're dealing with desire and destiny. If it was just any old thing that we could look and say, oh, you know, it didn't happen. Oh, well, let's move on with life. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about more than that. We're talking about your destiny. We're talking about your life. I was praying earlier this week and I was just thanking God for the life that we have. And I thought about Paul and I just like having a conversation with God. I said, Lord, I said, look at Paul. Paul said, I'm willing to be offered. I'm ready now to be offered. I said, because this life meant nothing because he had a life beyond this one. I said, thank you for the life that we have, that you come, that we may have abundant life. We're talking about more than just, well, well, we're here today, gone tomorrow. No, we're talking about your destiny and the plans that God has for every one of your lives. But God believes in you. Here's the thing. God believes in you. But he can't bless you until he knows you're ready for the task. A premature blessing can destroy you if you're not ready for it. But a prepared you can handle whatever God has designed you for. I know we don't like the delay, but sometimes the delay can be a blessing in disguise. Sometimes the delay that you're dealing with is building your faith and not tearing away at your faith. The delay that you're dealing with is making you hungry for what God has for you. It is making you willing to say, God, I don't care what I have to do, what I have to give up, what I have to go through. I'm willing to do it because I know my desire is going to come. No matter how long you've been delayed, no matter how long you've been tested, it cannot stop the desire from coming into your life. Patiently expect, patiently endure, keep believing in the promise because the same word that tries your faith will also come in power to release you into your promise. The desire is coming and the delay is coming to an end. Can you lift your hand and thank God for the desire that's on its way? When the desire comes, not if it does, but when the desire comes, it is as a tree of life. When the desire comes, when the desire comes, it is as a tree of life. Right now, for some of us, it's a season of want, but it will become a season of fulfilled desire, a place of renewal, a place of life. Because hope never disappoints us. Hope never disappoints. Joseph was tested. Man, was he ever tested. But God found out what kind of stuff he was made out of. God found out that Joseph had staying power. That Joseph had faith in a dream. With no other word from God. Huh. I dream. That's it. God never spoke to him again. God never said anything else to him. He gave him a dream. And Joseph believed in that dream. This delay that you're dealing with. It's a test of your patience and it's a test of your willingness because both our patience and our willingness represent the measure of our faith. It represents the measure of our faith. Let's stand together. Do you believe despite the delay that your desire will come? Yeah. When the desire cometh. I love what Proverbs chapter 13 verse 19 said. A desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul. A desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul. Hallelujah. When the desire cometh, it is as a tree of life. Could you pray with me right now? Father, we love you today. Thank you for the power of your word, Lord. Thank you for delays because they teach us and they strengthen us. They make us. They test whether or not we really want 
what you have for us and are we willing to hold on until it comes Lord I want to be like Joseph and I want to trust you even in the middle of a prison feet fast in the stocks to look and believe that one day my desire is going to come Lord let our desires come let this be the year God that we see the desire coming that desire that we may have given up on or that desire that we felt like was never going to happen because hope deferred makes the heart sick but God you're going to heal our sick hearts Lord these hearts of ours that have burst because of disappointment and discouragement and or it doesn't look like it's going to happen Lord it's going to heal because when the desire comes it's going to be a tree of life it's going to bring healing and renewal and life Lord I believe with all my heart that it's coming hallelujah would you lift your hand and thank the Lord right now for that desire coming thank you Jesus we praise you Jesus we praise you Lord I want to uh, go straight in to um, communion